What's going on everybody? Trey Ford Payback in the building coming at you guys with day two of the Daryl Brooks trial. Now I'm sorry it's been taking me so long. I keep complaining about my job in these videos. I'm very sorry about that. I don't mean for it to come off like I'm ungrateful for it because I, I do love my job but it just takes up a lot of time and trust me the entire time I'm working I'm like dude I could be making some videos right now. It drives me crazy. If you guys are still down to watch it I guess we're gonna find out in a little bit. I'm still working on these and I plan on cranking out day two and day three very quickly because from the looks of it it's not that long but before i begin you know what i gotta say if you enjoy the video please like share and subscribe do all that good stuff a few people have been asking how they can support the channel so i have added something down in the description thank you for that but of course i will have links to donate to the community of waukesha and the victims uh, in the comments section so make sure that you guys check that out that's all the updates I gotta give without further ado let's get into it I do that or the juror number not her name they've heard so, juror so my understanding is that following what mr. Brooks described happening at the initial appearance there was a woman that one of the deputies spoke with and warned her uh, it's my understanding that woman may have been in the gallery on Monday and was warned about behavior then. I have issued an order. She is not allowed back in these proceedings because of that. I believe we know her identity, and I can tell you with certainty it is not our juror. So, um, and wow. if there's anything else, any other requests, um, I don't think it's necessary to bring that juror. So wait, was he telling the truth about the lady that flipped him off? <laughs> he might have been telling the truth. Record, Either way, it's funny. Certainly, you know, do that if the state she did the right thing. Mr. Brooks, that that's important for their understanding or confirmation at this point. Yeah, and I think what would be important to know, to know if her poll number is the first 41. Mr. Brooks actually was in court on day one of jury selection and those were passed. In looking at my notes, I'm not, it's unclear to me if he was present at any time in day two of jury selection. I know he was in day one. Um, so he claimed that he was unable to see the jurors um, at the time. Obviously, if there's a juror from day one, he was able to see her because she, he was in court with her. I was going to say, I could barely um, so hear her. That would also be something, I guess, if we could establish that she was part of the first 41, then I think the record is clear that the defendant was in court when the first 41 were brought out, and therefore he could have objected at that time. Well, I will get confirmation of the number, um, and uh, we'll go from there. As Thank well, you. Any Whoever you are, we support you on this channel. Whoever that juror is, uh, you got nothing but respect here, and I'm really hoping they kept you. To that, Mr. I really hope they kept you on the case. Before I get to that whole issue, Your Honor, if I may, I would like to uh, state for the record and would like the record to reflect that um, I personally don't identify by that name. I am here as a third party intervener in that matter, appearing as an authorized representative for my client. I accept for value and return for value all the charging instruments in this matter and make my exemption available for discharge of all obligations and charges connected with this case. I do not dispute any Talking of the Talking to Sovereign and Citizen Book. <laughs> Your statements are noted for the record, sir. All right, as to the issue of the juror. As far as the issue of the juror, um, I was maybe briefly present when the first wave of jurors were brought in. I, I didn't recall really being in here long enough to really get a look at the jurors coming in because I was removed at that time. Actually, either they were coming in or shortly after they were brought in, I was removed. I definitely was not present for the second and third wave. I was in the other courtroom, so it would be, I can't see. Now, whose fault is that? From the other courtroom on the monitor, so. And look, either way, it's all his fault. I really hope they kept this juror uh, because, you know, that's his fault that he wasn't able to see who they were bringing in to be a part of the jury for this. You know, if he would have stopped with all the interrupting and stuff, 
then uh, he would have had a chance to make those decisions and say who he feels like um, can be impartial. Is that I hope I'm using the word right. Who he <laughs> he could have had like a say in the matter, but of course it wouldn't. Possibly of course he didn't. Be it's like once this dude just starts, it's like an avalanche. He just keeps them. going and going and going. It's like, dude, catch really yourself. Well Stop talking. As you move pretty quickly, uh, due to an have some self-control, for goodness sakes. My notes in front of me as to when you were brought in or not. Um, but I am advising you that I was able to confirm with others, including law enforcement, that um, the juror that you suspected was the woman who made an inappropriate gesture gesture toward you at the initial appearance, they are not the same individuals. I've been able to confirm that. I know the identity of the woman who did what you said, and it is not this juror. Um, is there any way that I can be sure of that? Do you want to have juror, I think it might be 41, I don't want to guess, <laughs> um, but do you I can bring that juror out when the jurors get here and we can have her under oath testify uh, that she was not at your initial appearance or any of the proceedings in this case. Uh, that would, I'm, I'm able to do that. That would be helpful, Your Honor. All right. Can we check to see where they're at and if they're here? And if so, to have that juror brought out. Okay, so apparently it's not the same person. Even though I very much wish it was. It's probably best we have a record of that juror number with specificity in any event. Your Honor, the only concern I would have, obviously, we may know that there's one um, person at initial appearance who may have made a hand gesture. I just wanted on the record that if there was a second person, it's not the juror that's impaneled in this case. I'm not aware of another. Nor, nor am I. My friend used to pay $163 for car insurance. Now look how much he pays. Most insurance. I'm not interrupting, am I? Um, Give me one second. Go ahead, Mr. Bell. Um, I would like to uh, state for the record, um, the prosecution seems to be saying this with first-hand knowledge. Um, you refer to the issue we're talking about right now? Correct, Your Honor. Is there a question with that, or I'm not understanding why you're raising that at this moment? Well, I'm raising it because the, it, um, the prosecution said that and they stated for that they knew for a fact that this juror is not the juror that I'm speaking of. I said that. Well, the prosecution said it too, Your Honor. I provided the information. No, they didn't. What are you I've talking? Been able to confirm the identity of the person who made an inappropriate gesture uh, to you at your initial appearance. For some reason, he thinks that them being, like, informed about things is, like, <laughs> he thinks that means that they're in on something. Where it's like, no, bro, they just know, like, it's their job to be privy to this kind of stuff. I'm sure the judge, um, the judge probably informed them, and maybe he just learned about it later because, you know, in prison and whatnot. I don't know, but... He had to like, there's some kind of like witchcraft going on. Like, how do they know that? This is, and based they shouldn't even know that information yet. Like, no. Juror that you suspected was that. That don't even make sense that he thinks that's weird that they know about that it. she was not that individual. And then subsequent to confirming that informal, with that informal information, um, I, I was able to do 
some additional questioning of law enforcement and others to determine the identity of that other person and confirm, in fact, that what you said happened. But it's not this juror, but we're going to bring that juror out just so you can, or I will, question her about that. So there's a very clear record that your concern uh, and whether one of the jurors on this panel was at your initial appearance and made an inappropriate gesture can be um, put to bed once and for all so that you're satisfied they are two different people, okay? Thank you, Your Honor. All right. Just can sit in the jury box. She's a juror. She's not a. She may be put under oath and questioned, but she's a juror, and so no one can film her, or take her photograph. Go ahead. She can just sit in uh, one of the spots in the jury box. Good morning. You can have a seat. Um, I just want to put on the record. This is juror number forty-one, and. Um, you are not in trouble. We just have had an issue come up, and we wanted to make sure we all had accurate information. At any point in time, did you attend <coughs> any of the proceedings in this matter uh, re regarding Mr. Brooks? Were you ever at the initial appearance for Mr. Brooks? No. All right. State have any follow-up based on that? No, Your Honor. Mr. Brooks, any follow-up based on what I've asked this witness, or what I've asked this juror, sorry? No. All right. Thank you. Thank you so much. Surprise! He asked her about. And I'm going to wait till uh, she's back. So dramatic the because there's a hallway behind me, and then ask a follow up. I'm sorry. I keep mentioning the subject matter Brooks, jurisdiction. Um, That's my go-to joke every time. Was that the same juror that you initially suspected? was someone who was at your initial appearance? Yes, Your Honor. All right. And again, she denied. She said she told us she wasn't there. And I trust that satisfies your inquiry into this issue. Um, I'm still a little leery, but I, okay. I say I say that. I'm not interrupting, am I? Go ahead. I, I, I say that because I, do, I don't forget faces. I don't. All right, I understand what you're saying, but the record uh, is made clear, and I'll make a finding that juror number 41 was not at your initial appearance um, and is not the person who made an inappropriate gesture to you uh, either at or following that hearing. All right, then any other issues from the state? Yes, Judge, uh, just briefly a few. Um, from yesterday's testimony, we'd like to move into evidence exhibit one, which was the map, exhibit three, which was the video played uh, during Corey, Corey Runkle's testimony, and exhibit five, which is the photograph of Erica Patterson. They were all testified to uh, yesterday. Any objection, Mr. Brooks? Um, yes, Your Honor. Um, I guess it would be... Uh, to the terms of relevancy, um, there's been um, no testimony from um, Ms. Patterson, so I'm just curious to know the relevancy of that VMA evidence at this point in time, because from what was said yesterday was that she would be testifying at some point. Would it not be better to have that admitted then if she decides to testify instead of right now when we're not even sure if she is going to testify? Um, your objections are noted for the record. There was a proper foundation uh, laid regarding each one of these exhibits. They all that, doesn't, um, that doesn't make sense for him to want, for him to say that it should be admitted into evidence the moment that she testifies before the court it's like with her being such a um with her being such a crucial part of this case that doesn't even make sense that uh you know any evidence surrounding their altercation or any evidence around um you know the altercation between him and that the, the friend of Erica and all this stuff that it should be admitted only once they start testifying because like 
you know, there's police. Um, I know there was a police officer that spoke to Erica, and then there was a police officer that spoke to her friend. So, yeah, it doesn't make so sense what he's asking. But of course, he asked it. Admit, um, exhibits one, three, and five, and also advise the jury when they come back into court this morning. Um, I'm not interrupting him. Um, hold on, I'm not um, to you yet if there are any issues, any other issues from the state. Yes, Your Honor, I would just like the record to indicate that I understand we, we did not follow up uh, with this after the lunch break on the record, but it was my understanding that Mr. Brooks did receive the medical attention that he was seeking over the lunch hour. So I just wanted that on the record. And then uh, finally, Your Honor, um, just a reminder to Mr. Brooks as to the other acts evidence uh, in line with his questioning of Corey Runkle yesterday, uh, Erica Patterson will be testifying here this morning. The court uh, ruled, issued a ruling as to the other acts evidence. The state strictly abided by that. Mr. Brooks came very close several times to opening the door to that testimony. We treaded very lightly on purpose to be respectful of the court's ruling but the court warned him twice. Mr. Wichow even personally went over and warned Mr. Brooks during Ms. Runkle's testimony. And um, before we start another round of uh, challenges, potentially during Ms. Patterson's testimony, we just wanted to make a record of that so that Mr. Brooks knows if he opens the door to that other act's testimony, it will come in. And I appreciate the state raising that as well. Um, Mr. Brooks, on the issue of medical attention, did you see the jail nurse or other medical personnel during the lunch hour yesterday? Uh, yes, I did. I received uh, uh, a cleaning of my cut and a bandage. All right, thank and, you. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I was getting to the other parts of the injury state. Um, Go ahead viewed the bruises that I have on my arm and legs as well. I don't know what's going to happen behind that, but I was looked at. All right, thank you. It does not appear to me that any of these injuries are interfering in any way with your ability to um, be here today and assist in your own defense. So that's good. Yeah, I'm just a little tender, just a little sore, so. All right, uh, Mr. Brooks, do you understand uh, what the state is referencing as it relates to the other acts evidence? I do not understand. Uh, do you recall being in court at the end of Surprising. August when the court addressed a number of motions, including a motion brought by the state to admit other acts? Um. And with all respect, Your Honor, this is this whole process is is very very new to me. So I'm I'm trying to, um, I guess, stay within bounds of the questions that I'm allowed to ask. If I color outside the line, so to speak, it is not intentionally because I'm I'm basically learning as I go. So I'm going to have my clerk print out the motion for other acts that was filed by the state along with attorney. the response that was filed by your attorneys at that time. And further advise you, the court uh, did not grant the state's request to admit other acts as it relates to your conduct with Erica Patterson prior to November 21 of 2021. And your questions yesterday of Ms. Runkle um, could have opened the door to the court revisiting that issue. That's why the court stopped. It was interesting, Ms. Runkle clearly was advised not to answer, not to talk about other acts. The state followed the um, requirement that they advise their witnesses about the court's order as it relates to other acts. Um, and I believe I, kind of paused twice and said, are you sure you want to answer that? 
Uh, I reference generally some prior rulings so as not to alert the jury to anything more than that. And then at one point. Can somebody let me know in the comments what they're referring to when they say a prior ruling about something that uh, the prosecution saying they'll open the door to this if he keeps asking? Like, can somebody just clear that up for me? Attorney, because I'm not too sure what they also mean. Also, came over, muted your microphone. I don't know what was said, um, but my understanding is he basically kind of gave you the same caution. There's a ruling, something to that effect. And I know you didn't proceed with the questions that you were had originally uh, attempted to ask. And why is this something that's so like it's very clear what we're talking about? Again, I'm going to give you these filings so that you understand what I prohibited uh, in this trial. And the record should reflect those uh, filings are being provided. Madam Clerk, do you happen to have the? Uh... And why is this something that's like is so? Uh... Because the prosecution even had to jump in and tell him, like, hey, chill out with that. So, yeah, I'm just confused as to what, what it is so they're trying to avoid in that. If somebody could just clear it up, I, I appreciate that. One sixty one. So documents one seventy one sixty one were provided to Mr. Brooks. So the other, the only other thing I'll say on that, sir, is if you ask questions, um, I'm not going. That would open up the door potentially, or at least ask questions that call for answers that might fall within that order that I issued. You do that at your own peril and you may open the door to the state bringing in other witnesses and other testimony about those issues. So I want you to be advised of that. You are correct mm. that when the they state- They helping them out, you know. Uh, made the request- It sounds like they helping I them. prohibited the state from introducing that and evidence. Even the so bailiff is shaking his head like, yeah, if you, listen. Uh, when you kind of referenced about that was, there's a difference between me prohibiting you and prohibiting the state. But from my perspective, the order that I issued was to your benefit. And so you can ask those questions. You're not prohibited, but then you potentially open the door to that information becoming uh, admissible in this case. So I want you to be advised of that. May, may I? Quick, Your Honor. Go ahead. Uh, I would just like to say that um, I accept for value and return for value these filings. Um, I do believe that um, I have a little bit more clarity, if, if that helps. Sure. Thank you for putting that on the record. Do you have any other issues you want me to address? Uh, just very, very quick. Um, I, I still don't understand the nature and cause of the charges against me, Your Honor, and I still would motion for or tennis motion for the jurisdiction to be proven the subject matter jurisdiction oh my god and also a motion for finding a fact your requests are all noted for the record and for the reasons previously stated on this record i'm not going to uh, answer those requests any further. They've already been denied by the court. And what is he even talking about at this point? <laughs> I don't know. The Benaby decision. At Let me look this up. At third, seven fifty-three. All right. Anything else, sir? Uh, I'm not interrupting. I'm gonna look up subject matter jurisdiction, y'all. That's what I'm doing right now. In case you, if you wonder. Just for the record, Your Honor would like the record to reflect um, is that a judicial determination that you are making he dropping lines in this one your honor the your mr. Brooks the record speaks for itself I've made my decision we're moving on all right with that then state have uh, a witness available to be called we do. Would you also just make a record your honor this morning that mr. Brooks does appear again in his orange 
jail uniform and that he was offered the ability to wear street clothes and <clears throat> declined that offer. Also, he does have appear appears to have. Okay, so I just looked it up. Uh, first thing that popped up as soon as I googled it. Subject matter jurisdiction, as noted above, <clears throat> excuse me, subject matter jurisdiction refers to a court's authority to hear the type of case or matter in question and addresses which cases are properly heard in which courts. So I guess he thinks every time he says that, she's supposed to stop everything and just give him a rundown of what he can say, what he can't say, or what the... Uh, let me see, authority to hear the type of case or matter in question. So yeah, I guess he thinks every time he says that she is legally um, supposed to stop everything and just start like name dropping his charges and name dropping what he can and can't do. I don't know if that's what he thinks is going on or yeah, I don't know. I, I'm not sure. All of his discovery materials at the table with him. Yes, thank you. I should make a record of that as well. Um, I didn't state at the outset. Which is pretty hilarious if that is what he thinks is supposed to happen. Custody, he once again has come to the courtroom in jail attire. Um, I presume, Mr. Brooks, but please confirm for me you were offered the opportunity to uh, change into street clothes. Um, as I stated on the record yesterday, um, I'm waiting for the results of the COVID test that I took. So until I get those results back, I would prefer to not wear street clothes at this time. All right. Can you confirm for me, though, that you were provided an opportunity to change into them if you so chose? And not to my knowledge. Sir, I'm providing you with that opportunity right now. If you would like to change into your street clothes, into the suit and tie that you had previously, or any other street clothes, I would give you that opportunity. Did you hear me advise you of that just now? Uh, I, I might consider it. Maybe I may have more information from the medical staff once we take a break, or maybe at, I'm anticipating. Well, actually, I anticipated that I would know before we even start at court so that, that do you want me to have the bailiffs uh, ask the CEO if there's any new information that can be relayed to you before we bring the jury out um, that would be helpful your honor do you have any objection um, I could email the jail administrator if you want or I can just simply have the bailiffs do that uh, wh whichever works best for your honor All right, let's see she's not going to give me information in an email that much I know, but I could at least find out if there's new information. If there's new information, then it's going to have to be given to you directly. That may require you to be taken into the holding cell uh, to be given that information, okay? Uh, I'm okay with that. Okay. Um, let me just continue that. Um, again, right now he's in the jail attire. We're going to give him an opportunity to see if there's any update regarding uh, the testing that was done earlier this week. Um, and until we at least get word whether there is new information or not, we'll um, not bring the jury out. Crap. Why do I, I feel really like, uh, I feel like he low-key kind of getting his way where he, um, not getting his way like he's getting the judge to do what exactly what he wants but you know we we could tell throughout this entire trial his number one goal is to slow everything down and i feel like um just in this instance he finally found a way to like get things to slow down to you know almost a halt where she's not bringing out the jury or the jury i keep saying that word wrong and we got to wait until, you know, she receives word back about his prison clothes and all this stuff. So, does have the three he managed to slow it down this previously. one time. Um, I see yeah. the objection sign. I see the uh, selected statutes that the court provided to him previously. And I see um, he has a number of papers in front of him. So he looks as if he's prepared uh, to participate meaningfully today. Can I say something real quick for the record, Your Honor? 
And I feel like that's why he's not acting I, like super I disruptive. Did bring these boxes up. I have not Hold on one second. had the time to go through everything in there. As you can see, it's a lot. That and that's putting it minimal. A lot. So I, I have not had the time to go through everything that's in there. I'm, I'm okay, attorney. Um, but yeah, I feel like that's why he's not being super disruptive. Is because he's actually getting his way a little bit when it comes to slowing this whole thing down. Like day two, uh, yeah, he's managing to slow things down almost to a screeching halt. And I paused the bailiff at a point where he's looking super stressed out. I'm winking his girl. Let him get a sip of that coffee. <laughs> Dealing with this dude cannot be something you look forward to doing every day. The information that I have on whether there's new information is um, they don't have the results, but um, medical will be called again to check on that to see if uh, anything um, new, any new information is available. But as of right now, there's not. Um, I, also, I also was advised that you were offered three times to have street closed by Officer Gabor. All right, then, Mr. Brooks, we don't have apparently new information. I intend to just continue then, okay? Uh, really quick. Really quick. Um, he ain't got nothing to, to say. The decision of your honor to for me to be uh, removed um, from from the proceedings the la over the last few days, um, that was used from the Illinois versus Allen, right? Correct. Um, I also had cited to a case that I believe uh, is on point, although not binding on this court. It's has per, I am persuaded by the reasoning in um, United States versus Jennings found at 855 F SUP 1427 With some health insurance companies, you get ads with actors doing yoga. Cut. Um, which is from 1994 uh, from Pennsylvania. And as well as, oops, sorry, just that one. That was affirmed by the Third Circuit in United States v. Jennings, 61 F. 3rd, 867, Third Circuit, 1995. <coughs> so the first uh, decision I referenced was a district, federal district court decision, and then the Third Circuit decision. Let me know if you need those citations again. Um, does any one of those? Uh, mention uh, the being present through uh, audio and visual. Yes, audio. In other uh, words, the defendant good? in that case, who also was a pro se defendant, was removed from the courtroom after he said he would continue disruptive conduct in the presence of prospective jurors but he was able to continue to listen to proceedings through loudspeakers and transmit messages to the court, was barred, and what the court held is he was barred from the proceedings by his own conduct, not by the court, and the conviction in that case was affirmed. Um, you want that citation again? Uh, no, it, I'm not interrupting, am I? No, go ahead. Um, I do represent myself pro per. I would like that for, stated for the record. Like the record to this fake that. respect he's showing. Um, the record will so reflect your choice of term to describe your appearance today. Um, I briefly read uh, Illinois versus Allen. It, it didn't say, uh, it didn't give any reference at all to him being present by uh, audio or visual in, in that case whatsoever it just it just strictly talks about um 
the reasons that he was removed and the options that the judge had in that. Um, one of them being that um, he would he could be uh, bound and gagged. Uh, one of them being that he can be held in contempt and removed from the courtroom. Imagine how much smoother this process would have been if this man was bound and gagged to the chair. I think I said in the last one, I was like, man, they, they need to just really... The trial would continue, but it did not say... Because uh, he felt too free in that other courtroom, uh, taking his clothes off and all this weird stuff. Man, tie that man to the chair. The case, sir, and providing that information, I'm Gotta well force aware him to act right. Says, and as that case says, the uh, Supreme Court talked about there would be no one formula for maintaining the appropriate courtroom atmosphere, uh, and no one formula will be best in all situations. But the Supreme Court said this, we think there are at least three constitutionally permissible ways for a trial judge to handle an obstreperous defendant like Allen, going through the three things that you uh, identify. And uh, my findings here are that there's a fourth way, and that's through the wonders of technology that weren't available in 1970 when that uh, decision was authored. So I appreciate the notation on the record. Uh, you are here today, and I hope you stay here today. That's certainly my preference. Um, you've demonstrated um, you're able to prepare, you're able to ask questions, you're able to articulate in a clear, coherent, cogent, and responsive way. Um, and I'd like to bring the jury out. And that's what we're going to do next. I'm not interrupting real quick. I just want to say something very quick to that. Very quick, sir. Um, I, I don't see that fourth way, Your Honor. Also, when Mr. Talk Brooks, my decision stands from previous. If you believe there's any error that I made, that is for you to address if there is a conviction and on appeal. But my decision stands. And, put, my, and the record speaks for itself. May I put on record that I intend to appeal that judicial you decision, Your Honor? Understood. You may appeal as you deem appropriate. Thank you. All right, thank you. Let's bring the jury out. I will ask everyone stand uh, for the jury um, out of respect for them. What was that little half stand he did? Like, why did he hunch the entire time? This dude manages to confuse me with like literally everything he does. Like I'm just like, what? Why this? Why that? So I'm going to send you this email. I just need the cases printed off. I don't want to interrupt uh, with printing here. Or do you want to send it to the attorney? I'm not going to send it. I, that, I'd have to search for it. So. Oh, okay. I want to be in the room. Sounds good. I think it's a great idea. Let's, let's do it. And we can, we can open it up and grab it. Oh, by the way, some people in the comments section told me that so she's not actually pregnant, and I don't know why I don't just uh, so you guys can see me doing it right here. I'm just gonna look it up on here, but I do appreciate you guys keeping me like informed about all this because. 
I have no idea. What's her name? Just Jennifer. Seated when you come in. And good morning, ladies and gentlemen of the jury. Welcome back. Have a seat. I'll make sure you all, looks like you all have your writing materials uh, to take notes if you so choose. For the record, um, I have received exhibits one, three, and five. With that, the state may call its next witness. Thank you. The state calls Erica Patterson. Uh oh. I believe this is his uh, ex-girlfriend. Make your way to the witness stand, which is upper riser, and to my right. When you get there, please raise your right hand. My clerk Teresa, who's standing over here, will swear you in. Do you solemnly swear that the testimony you're about to give shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God? Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Have a seat. First thing I will have you do is to state your first and last names for the record and then spell each. Okay. Erica Patterson, E-R-I-K-A-P-A-T-T-E-R-S-O-N. Right. Thank you. Go ahead, your witness. Thank you. Good morning, Ms. Patterson. How are you doing today? I'm, think I'm fine. Thank you. Sorry. Um, can you tell us, do you know a man by the name of Daryl Brooks? Yes, sir. Your Honor, I'd ask that the court uh, have Mr. Brooks temporarily remove his mask. Mr. Brooks, you're advised to remove your mask, please. Thank you. Ms. Patterson. Yeah, that's actually perfect for my, uh, my thumbnail. <laughs> I always got y'all looking at me, look at, looking at me do these thumbnails now. Yes, I do. Can you tell us where he's sitting and what he's wearing? On the left side, and he's wearing an orange shirt and a mask. I'd ask the record reflect that the witness has identified the defendant. The record will reflect that this witness has identified. I hope he don't act a fool with her. Can you tell us how? Because we see what he's capable. Um, since I was 15. The crazy oh, questions yeah. he'll ask. Two today. Oh, happy birthday! Thank you. <laughs> um, what's the nature? of your relationship with Mr. Brooks? We have a 15-year-old daughter together. Okay. In what state did you meet Mr. Brooks? Reno, Nevada. And when did you come to Wisconsin? Um, last year, 2021, June 13th. Why did you come to Wisconsin? Um, we were coming out here. I was going to be out here for two weeks and go back, but I never went back. Who did you come to Wisconsin with? Daryl Brooks. Where? Did you live when you got to Wisconsin? Atlanta, Georgia. Oh, we lived with his mother, sorry. Mr. Brooks' mother? Mm hmm In what city was that? Hold on, was that a yes? Yes, I'm sorry. That's okay. <laughs> That's what my job is to make sure their record is clear. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. <laughs> Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Okay. At some point, did you uh, stop living in Milwaukee and start living in Waukesha? Yes, I did. Do you remember approximately when that timeline was? November 2nd, 2021. Where were you staying in Waukesha? The women's shelter in Waukesha. That's downtown? Yes. Okay. Do you know a person by the name of Corey Runkle? Yes. Where did you meet Corey Runkle? The women's shelter. Were you roommates? Yes. Okay. I want to direct your attention to the date of November 21st, 2021. Okay. Yes. Did you know anything about a parade happening in Waukesha that day when you woke up that morning? I didn't know about the parade. Okay, what about that afternoon? Did it become apparent to you that something yes. was going on? Yes. Did you come into contact with Daryl Brooks on the afternoon of November 21st, 2021? Yes. Where did you first come into contact with Mr. Brooks? At Frame Park. And uh, how did that come about? What were you doing and why did he get there? We were messaging and calling each other all day. We were arguing back and forth. He came out there. Well, I told him I was with Miss Corey, um, and he came out there. I told him where I was, got in his car, we drove around, and then I forgot the street. We went up that street. It's a hill. It's kind of by the Walgreens. Um, we went up that hill. We drove around. Me and him got into an altercation. He hit me in my eye. I jumped out of the car, walked, and found my way back by Frame Park. Um, 
and then he followed me there. And then I went back in his car and I got out and I had called Corey. Well, I called Corey before that. And she came to meet me. I told her that me and him got into altercation. So she met up with me and by the time she got there, um, she pulled me out the way because his car turned around and he swerved. She pulled me out of the way. He got off his car and they got into an altercation, pushed her in her face. And I don't remember if she hit him back or anything that, that, that we walked away and walked back to the women's shelter. Okay. Let's go back and, and go through some of the details of that, all right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, you said that you told Mr. Brooks that you were hanging out with Miss Corey. Yes. Were you hanging out with Corey Runkle earlier that day? Yes, her and her friend Nick. Okay. Nick. Yes. Do you remember where you were with those two? It was at the Frame Park because we had split up when I met up with Daryl. Okay. Do you remember what you were doing in Frame Park with Corey? We were just hanging out. Okay. Any alcohol involved? Yeah, a little bit. Do you I remember? Had like a Mike's hard, a um, little Mike's hard beer. Okay. Yeah. Would you say that you were intoxicated after consuming one Mike's hard beer? No, I was not. Okay. And uh, at what point did you split up with Corey? Um, when Daryl was on his way, Corey and Nick had left, so I sat there and waited for him. We were still arguing on the phone, but I waited for him. I got a feeling Daryl gonna ask her some crazy questions, bro. Cause you know how disrespectful he liked to get. Like uh, when he was talking to, and I, um, I think it's Corey. I think that was a, the lady from the last one I did, but. You can tell he likes to try to get like low key disrespectful with the questions he asks. Um, to try to make the person seem like they're a certain way, like make them seem like their character is bad or something like that. How did Daryl arrive? That is, he didn't, he didn't walk to walk the shop. He drove okay. in his mother's car. It was the red, was it a Ford, I believe? I'm not sure what kind of car, but it was a red. Had you seen him driving that car on previous occasions? Yes. Um, had you ever been in that vehicle before? Yes. When you were staying with Mr. Brooks' mother, were you staying in the house? No. Where were you staying? We were outside. Sometimes we sleep in the, that car because his mom, he, he was not allowed to you know, be in the house. So, yes. And look, I was talking to somebody about this. I remember um, I saw a clip about her saying that they slept in the car and that he wasn't allowed in the house. I feel like his mom understood just how aggressive he was. Like, he's probably done crazy stuff growing up. So she just don't even let him in the house. And you slept That's in just how I feel personally. Yes. Even though she was talking to... For November of 2021. Yes. Okay. Um, I'm sorry, I'm just trying to catch what, what they're saying. Mr. Brooks first arrived in Frame Park when you first saw him. We were still arguing, pretty much. He was arguing in a bad mood when he met up with me and Nick. This is an argument that face-to-face, -face using words, not messaging, yes. right? Yes. Okay. Did you get in the vehicle? Yes. Okay. And what happened next? We drove around. We were arguing, and that's when we got into the altercation in the car, and that's when I jumped out. We were up the hill. Do you remember exactly the route that the two of you took while you were driving around? Objection. Road needs to be. Overruled. She may answer. Yes, I do. I'm not sure the exact street names. Like I said, I'm not from Waukesha, but I do know the route. After, um, or excuse me, the next day you met with Detective Steve Guthier. Is that right? Yes. It was that same day. Okay. And you uh, you got in the squad car with Detective Guth. Oh, that was the next day, yes. Sorry. And showed him the route that you took with Mr. Brooks? Yes, I did. Okay. All right. Um, you described going up a hill, right? Yes. Did you cross the river before you did that? No. Okay. What happened once you got up at the top of the hill? He drove up farther more, and then that's when I jumped. It was on the up the hill, it was farther more, and then that's when we he hit me and I um, jumped out of his car. Well, his mother's car. Where were you sitting when he hit you? The passenger side front seat. Where was he sitting? Driver's side. What did he use to hit you? His hand. Was it an open hand, a closed fist? Yes. What well, was it? Like this, sorry, like this open hand. Okay. But it was hard. Cause so it, the record should reflect that the witness raised her right hand and yes. kind of waved it almost like a back slap? No, harder than that. Okay. What did you?
you do after Mr. Brooks struck you? Despicable. I cried, and then I just jumped out of the car. And then going towards down the hill, he was following me. Describe how you were going down the hill. Walking down the hill. And how was he going down the hill? Driving. The red Ford Escape? Yes. Okay. What happened next? He just followed me all the way to the park. Okay. He tried to take my phone from me at the light going down the hill, and he just kept following me and arguing with me out the window. I feel so bad for the women in this dude's life, bro. You know? Because like I said, I touched on his on the thing about his mom. Like, I really do feel like he was probably doing something. That's just my opinion. You know, some people may feel differently uh, about that, but... It, it just goes to show, like, the women that are in this dude's life, it's, you just really can't imagine what they're going through. And even some of the people in the comments, some of y'all, uh, you know, I was lucky enough that y'all expressed some of your stories to me um, about the stuff y'all are going through. And it's it's just, it's, it's insane. It's crazy the stuff that, people will put other people through because they feel bad about themselves, if you know what I mean. Because at the end of the day, I feel like that's where a lot of that comes from, is a major insecurity that they want to force upon others, you know? And they try to do it any way possible, psychological torture, physical torture, all that awful stuff, man. Do you recall being... Uh, near a gas station while this argument was happening? Yes. Objection eliminated. Yes. Over, hold on. Overruled, she may answer, and the answer she provided may stand. Yes. It was right at the light. The gas station's on the, oh, that's the gas station on the left, and then Walgreens is towards the right. Okay. And uh, do you remember what was being said <coughs> at the gas station? I do not remember. Okay. Um, what happened when you got past the gas station? I kept walking. He was still following me. Did you at any point attempt to contact anybody for help? No, just Corey, about, but towards towards the, um, the frame park. That's when I called her, when I got closer to there. Did she answer? Yes. What did you say? I said, he just hit me, and I said, I need you to meet me, and that's when she met me. Where did you go? I walked past frame park, and I went... Um, I met Corey, and well, I got into his car and then got back out, and I met Corey at White Rock School, I believe it is. When you say his car, you're, you're talking about who? Daryl Brooks. And uh, were you familiar with White Rock School at the time? Did you, you ever no. been there before? No. Do you just know that from That's talking about this afterwards? Yes, yes. Okay. What happened when you got to White Rock School? <laughs> That's when I had, because I had... Got there, got back in his car, talked to him, got back out. Corey had met. She snatched me out of the um, out of the way because he swerved his car when he made a U-turn. And then that's when he got out of the car. And they were arguing, and he hit her in her face. And then I think she pushed him back. I don't recall. And then I was trying to split them up at the time. After that, we just kept walking and went to the women's shelter. Who did you leave? Me and Miss Corey. Madam Clerk, could we please have the... So he was already in the mindset to start hitting people with the car. She had to jump out the way and everything. He was already in that headspace. At this time, it's now projected on the screen in front of you a video marked as State's Exhibit Number 4. Do you see the screen? Yes. Have you seen this video before? Yes. Um, what does it depict, or what, what's in this video? What are we going to see here? You're going to see me walking, and you're going to see him um, turning the car back around and Corey meeting up with me in the altercation they had. Does this video accurately show what happened in front of the White Rock School on November 21st of 2021? Yes. I move Exhibit 4 into evidence and request permission to publish. Any objections? Yes, well, we haven't even played the video. How do we know what's even in the video at this point? Can we see the video before it is admitted into evidence? Your objection is noted. The foundation has been laid. Exhibit four is received. <laughs> and permission to publish is granted. <laughs> Can we also shut off the poly? I think it's the polycom 
system that's oh, taken yeah, up we space. Start like He want to start acting disruptive now so bad. He didn't get his way. And you see the gear is starting to turn. He's like, do I just start yelling stuff? Timestamp of 51 seconds in this exhibit. And look at his creep. Actually, can we pause quick? He riding up the side of the road following her. Paused at 104. And just to clarify, Ms. Patterson, we're going to watch portions of the video. We're not going to talk while it's playing. And then when it's paused, I'll ask you questions, okay? Okay. All right. Let's resume at 104. Pause. We've paused at one minute and 37 seconds. Ms. Patterson, uh, who did we see in the video there walking? Me. Okay. And we saw a red SUV, right? Yes. Who was driving that SUV? Daryl Brooks. Was there anybody else in the vehicle at that point, to your knowledge? Nope. Okay. Let's resume playing. I remember this video. Okay, we got Erica right there. I saw him swing around like he went around that way. Pause there at 4 minutes and 17 seconds. The two people who just entered the screen from the right, do you know who they are? Corey and Nick. Do you know which is which? Corey's on the left, Nick's on the right. Let's resume playing. I think Erica just joined up with him. I think I saw a third person. And look, here, here he comes. What is wrong with this dude, bro? Like, and now they fighting. And of course he attacked a female. God forbid he ain't gonna attack a dude. So now he's fighting the. I see stuff getting thrown off. There he goes. True coward. Six minutes and three seconds. Uh, Ms. Patterson, we we watched the video, but you were there. Can you tell us what was happening during that portion of the video we just watched? Corey and Mr. Brooks were arguing. 
and that's when he pushed her in her face and then she I don't recall what she did back and then that's when he drove off one of them I think it was Nick called the police um, and that's when he drove off Do you remember what Nick said when he called the police I believe Nick said he had a knife if I recall um, but he didn't have one but I, that's what Nick said on the phone when you say he who are you talking about Daryl Brooks and you didn't see Mr. Brooks with a knife that day? No. What about Nick? Did you see him with a knife? No. Did you have a knife? No. Corey? No. Why do you think Nick said to the police that there was a knife? Probably to make them come faster. Okay. Um, who got into the driver's seat at the end of that video? Daryl Brooks. And again, anybody in the vehicle at that point? No. Other than him? No. Let's resume playing from 6.03. I thought there was some coming back around or something. Stop it there at six minutes and 54 seconds. These some real friends right here. I walked away from Corey and Nick because I was mad because me and her started arguing after that because she was mad that I even met up with Mr. Brooks. Okay. And then she was running after me. Do you know the direction that you were walking? That's some good friends. I'm straight. And then. <laughs> That's fair. Walk's sorry. just confusing. I'm sorry. <laughs> it really is. I'm sorry. Uh, Towards downtown or away from? Towards downtown. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> and where did you go after you walked off the screen here? I just kept walking until they followed me, and then we made a left. I'm not sure which street it was, but we made a left. Did we you? didn't know. Yeah. We just made a left turn and went straight towards the women's shelter. Before you turned off of the street you're walking on here, did you have contact with the police officer? Yes, we did. Okay. And you, you spoke briefly with that officer? Yes. And then where did you go after you spoke with that officer? Then we left, that's when we made the left across the street and um, went towards the shelter, women's shelter. At the moment when Mr. Brooks um, left the, the little physical scuffle that we saw there and got into the driver's seat, how would you describe his demeanor? He was angry. Okay, how do you know that? What was he saying or doing that led you to believe that? Besides the fact that he was arguing the whole time and he hit me, he was just mad. He just left very angry. He just drove off fast. He was mad they called the cops. Okay. Um, you don't recall any specific things that he said at that point? No. Do you recall what kind of shoes he was wearing? I do not. Do you remember uh, meeting with detectives after this and saying that he was wearing blue slides? I don't recall that, okay. but I'm sure I did. Can we uh, please pull up for the witness only? Exhibit five. Objection. Why is that a witness? Oh, sorry. Do you recognize this photograph? Yes. Yes. And I'm, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to jump ahead there. I'm assuming that Mr. Brooks withdrew that objection. Yeah. Thank you. That was my understanding, and appreciate that. Okay, go ahead. And I believe actually Exhibit Five has already been exhibit uh, received and published, so I'd ask to do that again to publish again. Permission granted. Our object was it supposed to be for the witness only. The exhibit's previously been received, and the state requested permission to publish it once again, and it was I granted that request. Just so I'm clear when it's uh, published again. Uh, it's like 
I'm sorry, it's hard to put stuff like this into words sometimes, but it's like, um, like if you ever needed proof that this dude is, is a terrible human being, man, you see stuff like this, and then I think he's like a registered sex offender or some crazy stuff like that, so that's another box check, uh, then he did what he did at the parade. That's another box check. Like, this dude has covered literally all areas of being a trash human being. And so that's why, like, I get agitated when I'm like, this dude still has the nerve to try to wiggle out of this. Like, he's still trying. Like, that's a slimy Correct. creature. That's, like, subhuman stuff, bro. I don't want to like go too far into that because I don't. But. Miss Patterson, who's that in that picture? That's me. He really has covered literally all areas of just being. Just messed up. November 21st? Yes. Is that night? Yes. And what injuries uh, do we see in that video, in that photograph? That is my um, left eye that was swollen. Your left eye would have been the eye closest to the defendant uh, yes. based on your description of where you and the defendant were sitting in the vehicle? Yes. Right. And how did you sustain that injury? From him, Mr. Brooks, when he hit me. Uh, Ms. Patterson, did you consent in any way to being struck in the face? No. That's all I have for this witness. All right, thank you, Mr. Brooks. Do you have any questions for this witness? Uh, yes, I do. I'm sure he does. Uh, first of all, good morning. Good morning. And happy birthday. Thank you. Um, that whole little moment just gave me, <laughs> it put me in a bad you, mood. Um, Hanging out with your friends. He's trying to have like a little moment with her. Correct. After all this mess. Uh, would it be fair to say that you were hanging out drinking? Yes. Uh, would it also be fair to say that you occasionally drink too much? Objection is noted. Sustained. Here we go. I told you. Would it be fair to say that? Well, I told you. you. What were you drinking? A Mike's Hard Beverage. Um, were you aware that um, it was said that you were actually drinking vodka? No. Hold on. When there's an objection, I need to rule on it first, okay? Yes, ma'am. Um, sustain that mischaracterizes the previous testimony. Next question. So... It would be fair to say that you were drinking. Yes. Would it be fair to say that you were a little intoxicated? I was not. Uh, how much did you drink that day? One of a Mike's Heart Alcohol beverage. And around what time of the day was that? I don't remember. Was it... Um, shortly before meeting up with the alleged defendant, or was it sometime before? It was before. Did you have anything to drink after? No, I did not. Um, you stated that you were engaging in a conversation with the alleged defendant uh, via the telephone, would that be fair to say? Yes. Texas phone calls? Yes. Um, were those texts and phone calls of, what, what nature were they of? Me and Mr. Brooks were arguing throughout the day. And what is he trying to prove? Calls? Yes, we were. Um, if there were, uh, if the conversation was argumentative, why would you agree to meet up with the alleged defendant? 
I do not know. Okay, now I see the angle he's going at. Do you recall? I was going to say, I didn't know what he was trying to even say or trying to do. The meetup was supposed to be set up? I don't recall. Did you at any time ask the alleged defendant to meet up with you? Well, I told Mr. Brooks where I was. Did you at any time ask to meet up with the alleged defendant? No, I did not. So it would be fair to say that the alleged defendant just came where you were? Yes. I told you where we were, and obviously we were going to hang out. I never told Mr. Brooks to hang out with me. I told him where we were. So why would, if there was an argumentative conversation prior to you meeting up with the alleged defendant, why would you tell the alleged defendant where you were? Okay, so he's basically just trying to say, like, oh, okay, if you felt unsafe, uh, why would you show up there? All right, once again, I said this in the last one. What does that change about anything that happened? The end result was still the end result. You still put your hands on it. You still, uh, you know, ran through a parade. The end result has cha does not change, Okay. I feel like whatever happened, uh, whatever, you know, made them meet up that day has nothing to do with the end result of what happened. You know, the damage that he caused and everything, like, it, it changes nothing at all. I'm sorry, I just repeated myself <laughs> like three times. You just I got a bad habit of that. You don't know the city of Waukesha, would that be fair to say? Yes. So how would you know exactly where you were? Because I was with Corey and she's familiar with this area. Would it be fair to say that Corey overheard these conversations between you and the alleged defendant? Yes, she was my roommate. She heard every conversation almost. When you say every conversation, what would that when refer she, to? When she was in the room with me when I was always talking to Mr. Brooks on the phone, she would hear the conversations. She heard me and Mr. Brooks, me, Erica Patterson, and Mr. Brooks arguing the day of the parade earlier before we left. So it would be fair to say that you were engaged in conversation with the alleged defendant before you even left the women's shelter? Yes. And those argumentative conversations continue into your hanging out? Yes. Would it be fair to say that that's what led you to drink? No. Would it be fair to say you were drinking because that's what you wanted to do? Yes. Is it true that one of the rules and requirements of being at the women's shelter is no drugs and no alcohol? Would that be fair to say? Yes, but when I was drinking, it was at Frame Park. I was not at the women's shelter. Would it be fair to say that you knew you had to come back into the women's shelter at some point that day, that they have a curfew? Okay, <clears throat> so now you see what he's trying to do, right? And I knew he was going to try, I knew he was going to try some mess like this. So basically, he's just trying to trash her in front of everybody and uh, make her seem like a person that has terrible morals and character. And uh, yeah, it's just another tactic by him to once again belittle her like you can tell he's put her through i can't even yo i can't imagine i really can't so there you go i knew yeah. this was gonna happen too because he was trying this with with corey but it didn't get too far you did stay. Hey, look, she's getting a little flustered. Like, I don't... And requirements for being in the women's shelter is no drugs and no, no alcohol, correct? Yes, it was not in the women's shelter. He's trying psychological stuff. That's not what I'm asking. It's part of the requirement and rules of the women's shelter, no drugs, no alcohol. Yes. Sustained. Argumentative. Next question, Mr. Brooks. Do... Is there any type of 
drug and alcohol testing at the women's shelter? I don't know. No. No or you don't know? I don't know. Would it be fair to say that if it was found that you were engaging in drugs and alcohol that you might have lost your place at the women's shelter? All of that, I don't see how it's relevant. Sustained. It's not relevant. So around what time were you hanging out with uh, Miss Corey, you said? What? I don't remember. Do you remember where you were at? Frame Park. Do you remember where in Frame Park? No. And approximately at what time did you meet up with the alleged defendant? I don't remember. Um, how long were you um, with the alleged defendant? Do you remember that? Approximately 30, 35 minutes. Do you recall what uh, well, you, you said that during this time you were with the alleged defendant that there was a arguing going on. Would that be fair to say? Yes. Do you remember what that argument was about? He was arguing with me about money because I did not bail him out. You also said that... Um, I wish you wouldn't have got bailed out. To be honest. Well, let me back up from that a little bit. If you knew that the, the conversation was becoming volatile, why did you still meet up with the alleged defendant? I don't know. That's the did same you question you already asked. Did the alleged defendant know anything about the city of Waukesha? Yes. And it's just like the last time when he was questioning Corey. He has a, a like a terrible habit of staying in the same spot because he really tries to like drive the the um, the nail in. Like he just keeps going at one single point and dancing around that one topic because he's trying to make him look as bad as he possibly can. And what did the de alleged defendant know about Walker Shaw? But the crazy part is, Mr. Brooks told me that his- A lot of these questions he's asking make him look worse. Do you know that to be a fact? That's what Mr. Brooks told me. I'm so sorry, I don't know what happened. I think that's actually the court camera that did that. Were you, are you aware that- Oh yeah, it's focused now. The alleged defendant, in fact, has no uh, mother of any child that lives in the city of Waukesha. Objection. If Mr. Brooks wants to testify, he should do so with a motion to vacate his trial. Okay. <laughs> Other than what you can recall about what the alleged defendant told you that they knew about Waukesha, um, how did the alleged defendant meet up with you in the location that you gave? He already, Mr. Brooks already knew where Flame Park was. Mr. Brooks previously had been to Waukesha plenty of times before. He's told me that. And when, when was that told to you and what conversation? Was it that day? Before that. I'm not sure which day it was. I just know he knows about Waukesha. So, would it be fair to say that when you told the alleged defendant where you were, that the alleged defendant knew exactly where you were? Yes. And how would the alleged defendant know that? Because she Mr. Just... Brooks already knew Waukesha. He knew exactly where to go. Did you at any time give directions where you may have been? How could I give directions when I barely knew Waukesha myself? <laughs> That's a no, sorry. That's okay, thank you. So. Like, what are these you questions? You knew Waukesha yourself. Where did you get the information of where you were from, where you, where you were at? I at the time of the conversation, 
via telephone. I left the women's shelter with Corey and she knows that location. She told me what Frank Park was. I didn't know the name. And you, would it be fair to say, for someone from what you just said, that you were with the alleged defendant for approximately around 30 minutes or so? Yes. And during that time, I wish they would just cut them off. Did you make uh, any disparaging remarks or anything to that wrap it up? But like in Dave Chappelle, <laughs> he needs to. This question, bro. These questions are so worthless. Did you say anything at all during your thirty minutes with the alleged defendant? No, because I was crying the whole time because Mr. Brooks was yelling at me, arguing with me. Mm. So you said absolutely nothing at all. I was crying the whole time. Asked and answered. You that's your anything? That's your no. answer. A um, few more questions. Okay. Let them see how much you how much of a monster you are. You you said that. Uh, Continue with them questions. Let's hear it. During this, well, once you had got out of the vehicle, as you say, um, you stated that uh, your friend, Miss Corey, pulled you away from the vehicle because it swerved? Yes, it was in the video. You do know that we just saw the video. Would that be fair to say? Yes, but there's two angles of the video. Well, we only saw one, so I'm referring to the yes. video that we saw. Corey pulled me out the way when Mr. Brooks made a U-turn. And you almost swerved into Miss Patterson, which is me. Would it be fair to say that the video does not show that? There's different angles. No, the video it's not fair not to say. That, the video we watched. So the video that we just watched, that the jury just saw, there is no... Uh, swerving of the vehicle and you being pulled back would that be fair to Coming say that far angle you can kind of see it yes would that be fair to say that yeah, there's that she answered it she answered it move on move on point 11 sub 1 sub c i direct your attention to that next question do you recall what was said during the uh the altercation between uh, uh, was it is it Miss Corey and the alleged defendant? No, I don't remember. Would it be fair to say that you were standing right there? Yes, I just don't remember what was being said. I don't know what's going on with the car recording. Quality? Anything that may have been said during that? I don't think it's my no. Did you give a statement to anything that may have been said again uh, during that incident? No. Was anything directed towards you verbally in that incident? Yes. Corey told said, told Mr. Brooks, don't ever hit my effing friend again. Good friends. I remember that part. That was in the beginning. Great friends. Do you remember anything else that may have been said? No. Do you recall anything being said by uh, Nick to the alleged defendant? No. Do you recall the alleged defendant saying anything to Nick? No, I don't remember. You also stated that uh, right after this incident, you um, talked to law enforcement. Would that be fair to say? Yes. At any time, did you report any any abuse? Yes. And what did you report? That you hit me. <coughs> and you gave a statement to that effect? No, not to that police officer, but the detectives at the women's shelter. 
Well, I'm referring to right during, well, oh, I don't remember. after the incident. I don't remember what I told that op police officer. Just one quick second, I'm reading from the statement, if I may. You may. I wish they'd cut them off. Nope, no breaks. Keep going. Do you remember what was said by the alleged defendant when that incident ended? No, I do not remember. Do you remember uh, reporting in your statement that the last thing he said to me was F U B erase my number. Do you remember that? I don't remember. Would it be fair to say that you reported that this was said? I don't remember. Do you remember giving a statement to that effect? No. Would it be fair to say that you gave a statement? She no, already answered that earlier. Remember. I gave a statement to the detectives of the women's center. So That's would it I be remember. fair? I'm sorry, I, I didn't know if you. Who's done answering? Yes. All right, next question. Would, would it be fair to say that your memory is kind of cloudy of that day because you were intoxicated? No. I knew I was going to say it. I'm sorry if y'all see a bunch of jump cuts in this. A lot of things it's a lot of ads that, that, that keep playing. So I'll end it around it, though. Sustain. I didn't hear that question. There's a lot of things in this statement that you don't seem to remember. Is that fair to say? Sustain. Next question. Would it be fair to say that you reported two different incidents? Yes. Um, do you remember the dates of those incidents that you reported? The 20th and the 21st. Would it be fair to say that there was no incident on the 20th? No. Would it be fair to say that You were initially not truthful with law enforcement? No. Do you recall uh, making a statement to law enforcement on uh, November the 22nd of 2021? I don't remember. I made the statement on the 21st of the day of the parade when I met the detectives that night. Do you recall making a second statement the next day, or the next morning rather, which would have been the 22nd of November, 2021? Yo, what is up with these questions? Um, yes, I did actually, yes I did. What is he trying to prove? Like, I don't... Do you recall what you reported that day? I told them about the 20th when I met with Mr. Brooks and all we did was argue. And you hit me then too. So... You reported incidents for two days in a row. Yes. Do you recall uh, at any time telling law enforcement that you were not truthful and wanted to be truthful at that point? No. So you never made a statement to, to your knowledge that Man, how many times you gonna ask this? Fabricated a reported abuse incident. No. How many times? Still ask the same One second, exact man. question. To the best of your knowledge, do you remember talking with a detective? Bert? 
I don't know. I don't want to butcher this name, Your Honor. I don't, I don't know how to pronounce it. You can spell it if that's helpful. Uh, a detective, uh, B E H R E N D T. Detective Barron? Is it a detective or an officer? Uh, it says detective, Your Honor. Okay, ask your question. Um, do you remember speaking with that detective? Yes. Do you remember what you reported to that detective? I don't remember. Um, I'm reading directly from the statement, Your Honor, if I may. Ask your question. Do you remember reporting to that detective saying you were not completely forthright with all of the information that you had given because you were afraid of you were afraid to get other people involved in your drama or your business? I don't remember that. And I'll object and move to strike based on the fact that I think I'm safe in saying that that is not from the report which the defendant is referring to. The objection is sustained. I'll move, I'll uh, grant the motion to strike by the state uh, of the question and any response that may have been elicited before I address the objection. Your Honor, quick question on that. I'm, I'm reading directly from the report. Okay, so move on. Here, I take a break to coach him on how to be an attorney. That's so wild, <laughs> the prosecution. <laughs> you gotta come and, and guide him. Like a baby brother had to basically come and help him out. That's so wild, though. time uh, speaking with uh, Officer Goof? Yes. And do you recall on what date that was? Um, November 21st. Do you remember what you reported on November the 21st? That me and Mr. Brooks, I, went, I met with Mr. Brooks at Flame Park me and Mr. Brooks got into an altercation. You hit me. I jumped out of your car and then walked and met my friend Corey. You followed me. And then after that, Nick and Miss Corey, they called the police officer. And then you drove off. Just one second, Ryan. Looking for something else that he can say to make her sound crazy. Call reporting Just one second. Goof that you were not completely forthright with the information that you reported. I don't remember. And no, I, actually, no, I did not say that. So I apologize. So reading from what was reported to Officer Goof states that what I learned from Erica Patterson was that when I spoke to her on the previous evening with Officer Barron, uh, was that the pronunciation, Your Honor? I'm sorry. I don't have it in front of me. I'm not sure. She was not completely forthright with all of the information she had given. Would that be fair to say? What was your question? 
do you recall in your reporting to Officer Goof that you were not forthright with the information that you gave? No. I don't recall that. These questions are worthless. So to the best of your recollection, at any time that you reported incidents to any law enforcement, at any time do you recall being untruthful? No. So do you remember uh, do you remember the date and time of the first incident that you alleged? I don't remember the time, but it was November 20th. Do you remember what time of day that may have been? I just said I don't remember. Do you remember where you were at? Frame Park. So would it be fair to say that both alleged incidents that you are alleging happened at Frame Park? The second incident on November 21st did not happen on Frame Park. We were driving around and he hit me. What the I'm asking incident. is where you were at when you met up. Frame Park, yes. On That's both, not what you on both just alleged said. Cases. Yes. That's how Mr. Brooks knew where Frame Park is. He already knew Waukesha area in the first place. Same park? Yes. Do you remember where you were at during the in Frame Park? No, it was in the parking lot, the first side of the parking lot, kind of by the baseball field, I think that is. If that do is the baseball field. Do you recall who you were with? Nobody. I was with Corey on November 21st, and the first day on um, November 20th, I was by myself. So it would be fair to say that you went to to the park alone? Yes. I met up with Mr. Brooks on, intentionally on the 20th. Yes. Were you drinking that day? No. And how did you know how to get to Frank Park, as you call it? I knew how to get to Frank Park because I'd been the previous times before that with Miss Corey, walking past it. I knew how to get there because Corey walked with me that day too. I just was not with her. She walked towards there with me. And so then you separated? Yes. Did you separate from uh, Miss Corey at any time during the 21st? Yes, I did. She left with Nick and I was with Mr. Daryl Brooks. Do you recall to the best of your knowledge that it may have been someone else that she was with that was with you that day? She was by which day? Are you clarifying? Which day? Um, November the 21st of 2020. She was with Nick that day. The entire day? Yes. How can she speak on what she's doing and not? And you guys separated from that point? Yes. Would it be fair to say you guys separated after hanging out and drinking? Mr. Brooks, under 906.11, sub 1, sub C, you need to move on to a new topic. You cut this foolishness off. You've been over this multiple times. It's been asked, it's been answered, and now it's right. under my authority under 906.11, sub 1, sub, e, sub C. He's not even to trying to achieve anything at this point. It's just jabs, like... So to the best of your knowledge, well, let me back up. How did you communicate with the alleged defendant on November 20th of 2021? Phone calls. Um, strictly phone calls, Texas? Both. Mostly phone calls. Do you remember what was said in those texts and phone Same calls? Same conversation we had on the 21st. He was Yo, so she was just instructed him. Yo, okay, I don't know if I'm going crazy from from just listening to him say the same thing, but she just told him to move on, right? And is he literally, did he not just like ask the same type of question that he's been asking? I'm what? Not But well, he asked this at the very beginning, and he's asked so it like a few times. So why would you with the alleged defendant that day? 
because I just wanted to. We have a 15-year-old together. I mean, I, I was gonna, always going to talk to you then. Do you remember if there was uh, any agreed upon meeting up that day? Yes. By you, by the alleged defendant? Both. Uh, do you remember the reason why you were meeting up? She just said y'all have a 15-year-old daughter together. So it would be just to so conversate. So move on. Just to conversate. Would it be fair to say that you could have communicated strictly by the phone? Yes. Under Section 11 sub 1 sub C. The objection is sustained. Next topic, if you have one, Mr. Brooks. He doesn't have one. You said that you came to Wisconsin from... How much you want to bet it's the same type of question? Atlanta, Georgia, yes. June 13, 2021. And why did you leave Georgia? We were coming out here for two weeks, and I never went back. Can you state why you never went back? Number one, I came out here, I didn't have money. Number two, I had no way to get back. And you were always, uh, Mr. Brooks was always physical. So at any time were you ever um, offered That's, uh, money to go back to Georgia or did anybody at any time no. ever? No. Did anybody at any time ever uh, Lend any help to help you go back to Georgia? No. Did you, to the best of your regulation, did you want to go back to Georgia? Sustain. Next question, please. So I see now this is just going to be a painful experience. He's using this basically as his time to just do one more. Um, one more session of like domestic abuse against her you know so i see what y'all are talking about y'all were saying as the days go on this is going to get more and more painful i see what you're saying we got to basically sit here and listen to him like try to so abuse her one last time because he knows this is it with law enforcement uh of no on november the 20th after you alleged that you were abused? Because I've been dealing with it for so many years, I just didn't do it. So, I don't see what this has anything to do with this case. It uh, has nothing to do with it. How long have you known the alleged defendant again? Since I was 15, I'm 32 now. Would it be fair to say that? Um, I'm gonna chill out y'all. I'm gonna be quiet and stuff. You live in alleged. different states from the alleged defendant? Yes, but I'm. Oh, I'm sorry, that there was. I was going to object to that for clarification on the timeline there. I'll sustain the objection. Rephrase the question. I'll, I was going to get to that, Your Honor. Would it be fair to say that during the duration of the time, knowing the alleged defendant, that the majority of that time you did not live in the same area or state? Yeah. Off, yes. Off and on, I met Mr. Brooks in Reno, Nevada. I've moved out of Reno, Nevada in 2017 to Atlanta, Georgia. I moved Mr. Brooks throughout. I've known him throughout. It's back and forth, off and on. The whole, the whole 16 years, me, me and Mr. Brooks were not together. But it was off and on. Did you guys live in the same area off and on during that time? I, sustained. Out of the 16 years, you say it was, correct? Yes, off and on, on, Mr. Brooks. How much of that of that time did you actually spend with the alleged defendant? Sustained, also under 906.11, sub 1, sub C, move on. At the time of this alleged incident, were you in a uh, alleged defendant in any kind of relationship? Yes. And were you a couple? Were you just 
co-parenting or we what was the nature of the relationship is basically we were together i wouldn't have came to milwaukee wisconsin if i was not with him so it'd be fair to say that you were in a committed relationship yes All my attorneys and stuff in the comments, right. is there a time limit to how long you can ask questions? Like if somebody was just asking questions for like two hours or something, is that? Well, actually, no. Sometimes I've seen like with the previous person in the uh, video I did before. Uh, somebody said they had a limited amount of time. They had to travel or something. Oh, okay. I, I'm sorry. So maybe they cut off the time based on the... Maybe they um, ask the witness how much time they have, and then based on that, they kind of... How did... How did give uh, a general amount of time you can have questioning Before them. you came back into contact with the alleged defendant, how long had it been since well, you please let me know. seen the alleged defendant? I don't know, but it's years, a couple years. So it would, be, it would be fair to say that there was a significant gap in between interactions with the alleged defendant. Yes. Um, sustained, however, she provided the answer. It may stand. Next question. So during your time, uh, well, Approximately how long were you uh, staying around the alleged defendant before this incident on November 21st took place? I don't know the exact time. I just answered your question on the exact time. Were there uh, any separations or gaps during that time? Sustained. She just says she hasn't seen you in a couple of years. At any time uh, during these alleged incidents, were you with? Someone other than Miss Corey? Corey and Nick the day of the 21st, and then we separated and I met back up with him. Any time during that day, were you with anyone else besides those two that you just named? Mr. Brooks, you. What about the alleged incident on the 20th? I left with Miss Corey, and then she went all the different direction, and I went to Frame Park and met up with Mr. Brooks. So, to the best of your recollection, you were not drinking on uh, both of those days that you cite the 20th or the 21st. The 20th. Hold on. Mr. Brooks, number 90611, I'm stopping this cross examination. You've asked the same question. Uh, hey, multiple questions, multiple it's times. over. Um, Let's go. At this point, I'm going to declare that I didn't, I didn't the opportunity know. to cross is now concluded. I didn't know. Let's go, bro. Mr. Brooks, it's been asked and answered multiple times. So with that, to I'm going to turn to the state to see if they have any redirect. Just a brief clarification. Go ahead. 
<laughs> Yo, man, he is. After the video we saw, right? Yes. Okay. You remember meeting He's with so mad. detectives Jessica Barrett and Steve Booth that night? Yes. Okay. And you gave a statement to them that night, correct? Yes. You gave a second statement to Detective Booth the next day. Is that accurate? Yes. Okay. So let's talk very briefly about that first statement, the night of the 21st, mm -hmm. the night yes. of the parade incident. Yes. You told them about an incident that had happened between you and the defendant on November 20th, is that right? Yes. And you also told them about an argument that you had had with the defendant on the 21st, is that right? Yes. But you left out the part about any physical violence on the 21st, is that accurate? Yes. And then when you met with Detective Guth for your second statement on yes. the 22nd, that's when you confirmed that there had been violence with Mr. Brooks on the 21st, is that right? Yeah, yes, well they seen my eye on the 21st when they came, so I did let them know about the, the incident on the 21st, I did. The next day I let him know about the, the incident on the 20th is what happened. Okay, All Yes. Right. thank you. To make it better, yeah, <laughs> sorry. That's all I have, Judge. Thank you. Thank you. You may step Thank down. Thank you, Your Honor. He's so mad. <laughs> He's so mad he, can, he can't continue to abuse. From the defense. Yes. Do you have a subpoena for her? Um, I was, that was your last I one. I was supposed to. Uh, all right. I'll take that up in a little bit for now. I'd ask that she be maintained under the state subpoena until I can clarify that issue. I All hope right. she don't have to come um, back. State have the next witness available. Yes, we do. You know he's going to try to get her to come back. Mr. Brooks, please. Um, before the next witness comes in, if my ladies and gentlemen of the jury want to take a quick moment to stand. He's so bad. <laughs> And look, he's sitting here staring at the judge again. <laughs> <laughs> 